This econometrics video will cover non-stationarity and time series models with a focus on trends. By the end of this video, you should be able to use statistical tests and graphical methods to determine whether a time series has a stochastic trend. First, let's recall the definition of stationarity, which was introduced in a video on time series assumptions. We say that a time series y is stationary if its probability distribution does not change over time. If you apply this definition and also refer to the discussion of stationarity from that time series assumptions video uh, to the graph shown on the bottom of the screen of US GDP uh, versus time, you might hypothesize that uh, GDP is not a stationary time series, um, and you would be correct. Uh, so let's dig a little bit deeper into uh, why that is. Uh, so, of course, you, you do notice that uh, GDP is generally increasing over time uh, with a very small number of exceptions. And so one thing you might say is that GDP appears to have a trend. A uh, trend is a persistent long-term movement over time. Uh, so one way that we can try to determine whether a time series uh, is stationary is to ask whether it has a trend, and we can ask whether it has a trend by attempting to model those trends. Uh, so let's talk about a few ways that we could potentially model time series trends. Uh, one method is to use a deterministic trend. Uh, a deterministic uh, trend is one that does uh, has a non-random function of time. Uh, so in, in this equation, uh, we're hypothesizing that GDP is a linear function of time. Uh, now, there is also this uh, random error term uh, u sub t. Uh, we generally uh, are going to model those uh, random error terms as being uh, mean zero and having independent draws in each time period. Uh, and although it is the case that GDP is increasing over time, uh, I hope you'll agree that a linear function of time probably is not correct here. If I tried to uh, match this uh, graph to a straight line, uh, it probably would not uh, be very close. Uh, in other words, it seems like a deterministic trend is, is probably not the right way to model a variable like GDP uh, and probably many other uh, economic quantities. Uh, instead, we might consider a stochastic trend. Uh, so stochastic trend is one that varies randomly over time. And one example of a stochastic trend is known as a random walk. In a random walk, the time series variable y, uh, so t is modeled as being equal to uh, that same time series variable in the previous period, y sub t minus 1, uh, plus uh, another mean 0 error u sub t. Uh, so we might wonder, for example, whether a GDP uh, is uh, well represented by this particular time series process uh, of a random walk. Uh, rather than trying to formally test that now, uh, we'll try and understand uh, this and a couple of other uh, potential time series processes uh, through simulation. Uh, so I'm going to uh, simulate this process drawing random errors for u sub t for 20 different realizations of this uh, random walk time series. Uh, so here are the results. Uh, so one thing you might notice is that uh, you see a bit of a fan shape. In other words, the simulations tend to uh, spread out over time. Uh, one thing you might ask uh, first is, well, what exactly makes this a trend? Uh, if you recall the definition of stationary, uh, you'll see that there is clearly a different distribution of uh, the realizations of y uh, as you increase time, as you go from the left side of this graph to the right side of the, this graph. Uh, even though the mean stays about the same, you'll notice that the, the spread clearly increases over time. Uh, which means that the distribution is not the same. Uh, you might get a sense of why that happens if you take a close look at the formula. Uh, so our best guess of the current period's y is going to be the same as whatever the last period's y was because that u sub t error uh, is a mean zero uh, random number. Uh, but what that means, of course, is that if last period a positive error were to increase the value of uh, y sub t minus 1. Uh, now I would expect that uh, further uh, values of the time series uh, in the future uh, are more likely to be uh, more positive 
So let's consider a variation on the random walk, specifically a random walk with drift. Uh, in uh, this model, we have the same terms as before, but notice we've also added a beta zero at the beginning. Uh, and I'm going to, again, uh, simulate this. And I'll start by plugging in beta zero is equal to uh, 0 0.2. Uh, so here are the results. Uh, so a few things to notice. Uh, you probably uh, first see that uh, the time series tend to increase over time. Perhaps that's not surprising when you think about what the equation is doing. In each period, in addition to this random error, we're also adding on a value of 0 0.2, positive 0 0.2, um, onto the previous period's uh, uh, value of the time series. Uh, and so in general, we're going to, to tend to see uh, the time series increase as time progresses. Uh, of course, we also, uh, once again, see that the, the variation of this time series increases over time, just as the random walk without drift did. We could do another random walk with drift, uh, but change the value of beta zero. So in this case, beta zero is negative one. Perhaps you're already hypothesizing what it looks like. So here are those simulations. Uh, so that negative one means that we now have a downward drift. Uh, you might uh, notice that the scale of the uh, vertical axis has changed. So even though it might look like these uh, values are not spreading out as much over time, that's uh, simply a, uh, because of uh, the wider scale of the vertical axis. A more general way that we might attempt to model these various time series processes uh, is to use the idea of an autoregressive process. Uh, so recall from uh, the introduction to time series modeling uh, that an autoregressive process of order one or an AR1 model uh, is one where uh, the time series variable y depends linearly on the same time series value lagged one period, uh, of course, plus another mean zero random error. When you compare this autoregressive process to the uh, time series processes that we just modeled, You'll notice that if you set beta 1 equal to 1, uh, we have a random walk. Uh, and more specifically, if we also set beta 0 equal to some non-zero number, uh, then we have a random walk with drift. So one question we might ask is whether other AR1 processes also create trends. Uh, so for example, if uh, we were to set beta 1 equal to 0 0.5 uh, instead of 1 and beta 0 equal to 0, uh, do you think uh, we would see the same types of trends, um, or would we in fact have a stationary process? So I'll show a simulation of this process in just a moment, but first let's see if we can uh, gain any intuition for what might happen uh, by taking a close look at the formula. Uh, so recall that when we looked at a random walk, uh, as soon as the uh, time series uh, shifted up due to some uh, positive random error, uh, we found that the process tended to uh, stay positive uh, for the simple reason that the uh, expected value of the next period was the same as the expected value of the current period. Uh, in other words, uh, any uh, shocks to the system, any uh, positive uh, or negative uh, errors tended to persist. Uh, now, what happens if instead of uh, in this AR1 uh, process, instead of setting beta 1 equal to 1, uh, we set it equal to 0.5. Uh, well, it seems like uh, multiplying uh, the previous period by a fraction less than one uh, could potentially pull the series back towards zero. Uh, and this is indeed what's going to happen. So here is uh, a simulation of 20 different realizations of that error one process, uh, where beta zero is equal to zero and beta one is equal to 0 0.5. Uh, so one thing you'll uh, hopefully notice is that not only does the mean of this process uh, tend to stay right around zero, but if you were to look at two different time periods and ask uh, what kind of variation do you see in that time series, uh, I hope you'll agree that uh, that variation is roughly the same. Another way of saying this is that it appears that the distribution of the time series does not change over time which means that this process is stationary. So one thing you might wonder is uh, if uh, having beta 1 equal to 0 0.5 results in a stationary process, uh, 
but having a beta 1 equal to 1 results in a non-stationary process, uh, where do we switch from stationary to non-stationary? Uh, let's go close to 1, but not quite there. So here's a simulation of an AR1 process with beta 0 equals 0 and beta 1 equal to 0 0.95. I think with looking at this graph, it might be a little bit hard to tell. Perhaps it has some uh, of the features of a random walk, uh, but it's uh, it's also not immediately clear whether the variation in uh, these these simulations, uh, uh, these time series, uh, is increasing over time. Uh, to get a better sense of this, however, what I'm going to do is extend this from the 100 time periods that I've simulated right now to 1,000 time periods. Okay. And although we still do see uh, a few uh, blips in the time series, a few areas where uh, one time series uh, was able to uh, uh, increase or decrease to uh, abnormally higher low levels, I hope you'll agree that we see roughly a constant mean and roughly a constant variance. Uh, in other words, it does appear that uh, this time series uh, is also stationary. Uh, so one takeaway here is that it seems like simply having a beta 1 less than 1 is enough to make uh, an autoregressive process stationary. Uh, so returning to this, uh, to, to our general framework of autoregressive processes, uh, we might uh, hypothesize quite reasonably that if beta 1 is equal to 1, uh, we call that a random walk, uh, that seems to be a non-stationary process. I'll also note that we sometimes call this beta 1 equal to 1 a unit root. Uh, unit refers to the number 1, and root refers to uh, the, the value beta 1 that we're multiplying uh, the previous realization of the time series by. Um, if the absolute value of beta 1 is less than 1, uh, then uh, it appears that we have a stationary process. Uh, so shortly, we'll return to this idea to come up with a formal test of whether a uh, time series is uh, non-stationary or stationary. Uh, it's worth noting that we could certainly model more complex sto stochastic trends, uh, but it's easier and more common to model processes as AR1, especially when uh, we're trying to test whether uh, a time series has a unit root, uh, meaning uh, trying to test whether it's a non-stationary process. So before we turn to those formal tests, Let's first discuss some problems that we encounter when our time series variables have stochastic trends. Uh, so first, autoregressive coefficients are biased towards zero. So what does this mean? If we have some time series variable and we would like to model that variable using an autoregressive process like this one, uh, where the realization of y at time t depends on the realization of y at a previous time period, uh, and we were to use OLS to estimate uh, beta 1 hat, we should find that that beta 1 hat is generally going to be too small in magnitude. Uh, a second problem is that t statistics have non-normal distributions, even in large samples. So why should we care about this? Uh, well, anytime we do a hypothesis test, uh, our critical values are based on the shape of the distribution, uh, and so the, uh, the fact that these t-statistics have non-normal distributions uh, means that our hypothesis test conclusions could be incorrect. A third problem is known as spurious regressions. Uh, this occurs when two time series appear to be related uh, when in fact they are not. Uh, note that this can occur when either of the time series uh, involved in the regression has a stochastic trend. Uh, this last problem uh, is really a huge problem in time series analysis. Uh, so recall that in the video on time series assumptions, uh, we uh, estimated a regression, or we discussed a regression, of the U.S. unemployment rate on Japan's industrial production index. Um, however, uh, there were also some concerns that Japan's industrial production index had a stochastic trend. It was non-stationary. Uh, in fact, there is some evidence of, of this that uh, we'll see using a test uh, that we'll show shortly. Uh, because one of those two variables appeared to be non-stationary, uh, this indicated that the relationship is likely to be spurious. Uh, in other words, even though we had what appeared to be a statistically significant relationship uh, between two time series variables, 
uh, we should not draw any conclusions of, of this uh, because uh, that relationship was likely, in fact, a spurious uh, regression. Uh, for a rather lighthearted uh, view of spurious regressions, uh, there is a, a clever website uh, which is shown at the bottom of the screen, uh, which shows a wide variety of spurious correlations, in this case uh, between capita cheese consumption and the number, number of people who died by becoming tangled in their bed sheets. Uh, if you'd like to visit that site, uh, you can uh, even generate your own spurious correlations. Uh, to end on a more serious note, uh, one uh, important thing that we may like to do uh, with uh, the autoregressive models we've discussed is to test for a unit root. Uh, so if we had a time series variable y that we thought might uh, be non-stationary, meaning it has a unit root, uh, we could estimate this AR1 model. Uh, we would like to test whether beta 1 is equal to 1, so this makes a natural null hypothesis. So recall that we called that a unit root, and it also indicated uh, that the time series variable was non-stationary. The alternative hypothesis is that the coefficient beta 1 is less than 1. In that case, we do not have a unit root, and the time series is stationary. So one thing we might be tempted to do is simply to estimate this model, and we could perform a t-test on uh, the estimated beta 1 coefficient uh, to complete the hypothesis test. Uh, there are some technical problems with that, if you recall back to the problems with stochastic trends, one problem was that t-statistics have a non-normal distribution, and so we have to make uh, one technical fix to that. Uh, specifically, we're going to use what's called a Dickey-Fuller unit root test. We're actually going to start by calculating the t-statistic uh, for beta 1 like we normally would, but we have to use a different set of critical values because of this uh, more complex distribution. So rather than getting in the, into the details of this, uh, I'll simply note that many software packages are capable of uh, estimating a uh, Dickey-Fuller test. Uh, so for example, in Stata, it's as simple as typing D Fuller uh, and then the variable name. Uh, Stata uh, and many other software packages will report a p-value. And so for example, if you get a low p-value, then you would reject the null hypothesis meaning that there is evidence in favor of the alternative that the time series of interest is stationary. Um, generally speaking, this is good news. Um, you, uh, if you would like to estimate a model that has uh, two variables in it, you'd probably like to make sure that those two variables are stationary before you proceed. Uh, if the p-value from the Dickey-Fuller test is larger, that means we would fail to reject the null hypothesis uh, and we cannot rule out that the time series has a unit root, and therefore uh, we should be more cautious about drawing conclusions from those results. Finally, if we're concerned that a variable that we are interested in uh, does appear to have a unit root, or at least we can't rule it out, we may be curious what we should do about it. Uh, and so uh, the, probably the best way to avoid a stochastic trend is to try to transform the time series so that it no longer has a trend. Uh, so a few examples. Uh, we could use the inflation rate instead of the consumer price index. Uh, the inflation rate is just the percent change in the consumer price index. Uh, we could use the growth rate uh, of the country instead of the GDP in a given year. Uh, it turns out that changes in a variable uh, often end up being a stationary process, even if uh, the underlying variable y uh, is non-stationary.